I'm Gordon Edwards from the Canadian Coalition for Nuclear Responsibility and I'm here in China to really talk about the fundamental problems of nuclear power which have become more and more clear as the nuclear age has unfolded. The fundamental problem with nuclear power is that two things. First is that inside the nuclear power plant not only are you producing electricity by means of boiling water and generating steam and turning a turbine to produce lots of electricity but at the same time you are mass producing some of the most poisonous materials ever known to science and where do they come from these poisons well it's because inside the reactor they're cutting uranium atoms they're splitting uranium atoms to produce energy but those broken pieces of uranium atoms are there are hundreds of different kinds of them and they are millions of times more radioactive and very dangerous for all living things so that not only is the reactor a machine but it's also a warehouse of radioactive poisons anything that destroys the the uh, containment of that warehouse uh, whether it's a, an act of war whether it's an act of sabotage or whether it's just an accident or an earthquake or a tsunami anything that can open up that reactor and spill those radioactive materials into the environment not only causes harm immediately but makes large areas of land uninhabitable for a long time into the future. So the big problem here is not how many people are killed right away. The question is, is the land even usable afterwards? Can you go back and rebuild on this land? And in fact, uh, as we've seen at Chernobyl, as we've seen at Fukushima, uh, these areas are going to be permanently uninhabitable. Now there's a second problem with nuclear power and that is that you can't shut the reactor off. Uh, they do shut off the reactor in terms of stopping the splitting of the atoms. That's called the fission process. They can stop that. But the radioactivity of the materials that are created inside, nobody knows how to shut that off. And that still generates so much heat that unless you remove it by means of pumps and equipment very rapidly, as rapidly as that heat is being produced, the temperature is going to climb higher and higher until you reach the melting point and this happens quite quickly this happens in a matter of hours so that if there's anything that interferes with the operation of the pumps a lack of electricity strangely enough even though the power plant produces electricity if it's if it is in an emergency situation it needs electricity from elsewhere and if that electricity is not coming if the pumps are not running the reactor is going to overheat and melt down and when it melts down there are explosions and there are releases of radioactive materials lots of radioactive materials into the environment so we have a problem here of a machine that can't be shut off a machine that mass produces poisons and one that therefore poses a real danger to not just to the present but to the future here in the case of Hong Kong uh, an accident in case of weather conditions that happened to be blowing towards Hong Kong an accident very similar to the one we saw at Fukushima not necessarily caused by a tsunami but simply caused by mechanical errors could result in making Hong Kong uninhabitable and one has to ask the question is this really a sensible chance to take you know people love to gamble I like to gamble sometimes and you may want to bet some money on a roulette wheel and you say, okay, I can afford to lose this money, a thousand dollars, maybe a million dollars, maybe a billion dollars, maybe ten billion dollars. But do you really want to risk the whole future? Do you really want to risk on the turn of a roulette wheel? Do you really want to risk the future of the inhabitability of the land you're now occupying? This is really the question people have to ask themselves when they think about nuclear safety. So in short, I would and I should mention one other thing and that is that even when the reactor is shut down and the fuel is removed from the reactor and put into a pool such as happened at unit 4 at Fukushima Daiichi um, even in the pool the heat is still being generated the irradiated fuel containing hundreds of fission products which are millions of times more radioactive than the original uranium has to be cooled for at least five or ten years by circulating water otherwise it will overheat and it will release radioactive materials into the air 
in the case of Unit 4 at Fukushima Daiichi, it was really that pool which was the source of all the radioactive emissions that came off from that reactor. So we see here that you have a problem not only when the reactor is running, but even after the reactor is shut down. Just imagine, uh, we have this horrible hit memory of the Japanese invasion of China, which happened so long ago. Uh, but imagine that an, a nuclear reactor was in a position where you thought that there might be an attack sometime in the next few weeks, and so therefore you shut down your reactor. You cannot walk away from it. It's still not safe, because even then the reactor could melt down. And even the fuel in the pool that is left behind could still overheat and release large amounts of radioactivity into the air. So you can't even shut these reactors down and make them safe ahead of time. And that's really the fundamental problem with nuclear power. Um, those materials cannot be shut off. They're radioactive materials, unstable, broken fragments of uranium atoms that we have created in a for the purpose of generating electricity, but which we now have to guard for the next million years or so because we don't know how to stop that radioactive process. And we know that that radioactive material, if it finds its way into the environment, is going to go into the food chain, it's going to go into human bodies, it's going to do a lot of damage for generations and generations to come. That's why we have this problem called the long-term storage of radioactive waste. And nobody really has a solution to that problem either, because in fact, we humans have never really disposed of anything. Nature always finds a way to recycle things. That's what nature is all about. The water cycle, the food cycle, all of the nutrition cycle, the oxygen cycle, the water cycle. And uh, nature will find a way to recycle almost anything we can think of. If you try and imagine some dangerous material which the human race has managed to completely dispose of without destroying it, I think you'll be able to realize that we do not have even one example of such a thing.